Greetings! This will be a complete walkthrough on using this Excel checkbook register spreadsheet. This version was released in October 2022 and it includes several changes suggested by readers over the years. I originally created and shared my checkbook register spreadsheet as an alternative to others I have seen. Most checkbook spreadsheets I've tested have a problem anytime that you cut and paste transactions in order to rearrange or move them. In other spreadsheets, when you do that, the formula for the balance column gets messed up. Uh, we'll start with an overview of the spreadsheet and the different worksheets that are included. So the newest version here of the sample checkbook features four worksheets for maintaining registers of four different bank accounts. Uh, they are right now just named generically register one, register two, register three, et cetera. But you, know, you may want to uh, change these to reflect some other uh, sorts of names that make sense for you. Maybe this first sheet's checking account number one. Maybe the next one would be a, a savings account. Uh, maybe the third one is a, is a joint account between you and your other spouse, as an example. Uh, so those are easy changes to make. And again, there are four different worksheets available for tracking four different bank accounts. And you can certainly you know, delete uh, these sheets if they are unnecessary. I would tend to recommend not doing so because it's super hard to actually add them back if later on you would like to have the tracking for four accounts. So again, we've got four different worksheets for up to four different bank accounts. There are corresponding dashboards to go with each account. So dashboard one would go with register one. The dashboard screen has bar charts and a pie chart to help show how your money is being spent uh, for each particular account. So each dashboard sheet is tied to the corresponding uh, register. So again, we have four different dashboard sheets. We have a category sheet, which is for categorizing your transactions. And we'll talk about that again in a moment. Uh, then there are also some pivot table worksheets that typically you can ignore, but they work behind the scenes to drive the charts on the dashboard worksheets. And then also there is a sheet in here called card debt, which is great for tracking any credit card debt or other loans that you might have. And we'll take a look at that in greater detail as well. But we'll start with using one of the sample register worksheets for tracking your transactions in a particular bank account. There are some columns here that you might find unnecessarily unnecessary, and you certainly are welcome to delete those. As an example, there's a column here for transaction type. My particular bank likes to reflect the type of transaction where it might be um, a credit versus point of sale versus a check versus an ATM withdrawal. Uh, but if this particular column is unnecessarily unnecessary or worthless to you, if you point at the letter B and do a right click with your mouse, so right click on the letter B, you can certainly just delete that column from the spreadsheet. So we've got columns for, of course, recording the date, type of transaction, the check number, a description for the transaction. If, it, if it's a withdrawal, then we would put the withdrawal amount in that column. If it's a deposit, for example, a paycheck, we would put that amount in the deposit column. The balance column will automatically compute for you. And then we have a category here to specify a subcategory for the transaction. We'll look at that here in a moment. And then automatically, the primary category and type will be um, computed or automatically filled in for us. Lastly, we have a column for memo if you just want to have an extra column to help describe or remind yourself what that transaction was about. Again, that is a column that if you'd like to delete, you certainly can. Just right click on that letter K, choose delete, and you can get rid of that memo column if you just find it uh, unnecessary. But by way of example, let's look at entering a new transaction. So I will put in a date here and I will uh, arrow over to my transaction description and put in the name of a grocery store. 
I'll put in a, an amount that was spent. The balance is automatically computed. And then over here in the subcategory field, we do have data validation in place here. And so we can click on the little drop down, review the categories that are here, and choose the choice that corresponds. So in this case, I'll put in groceries. And then automatically, living expenses and expense is populated in there. Uh, let me do another example to show what happens when I don't have a subcategory that I would like. So let's say, for example, that I have bought a new vehicle with a particular bank. I probably would, of course, put in the bank's name there. But let's say this new vehicle is a motorcycle and I have a $225 a month payment. So over here for my subcategory, perhaps my preference would be to have a subcategory that would be for, let's say, motorcycle payment, but I, I don't have that as a choice. So over here in the categories column, here's where I would want to review the categories list. And there are some helpful instructions here, which says that, um, you know, if we want to add in another item, so I'm going to say motorcycle loan. And as soon as I like hit my enter key, it actually kind of adds a row here to this alternating colored table. And I will put, uh, well, go ahead. I think I'll make this a transport for the uh, main category. And it is certainly an expense rather than an income. Uh, so I've now added that to the list. Now, if I go back to my register and I click here, it's going to be at the bottom of that list because that's the order of my categories. So if I'd like to keep this list alphabetized, then I just need to make sure that my cursor is in one of these first columns. And under the button here for sort and filter here in Excel, we've got a sort A to Z button uh, to click on to resort that list so it's alphabetical. And now when I come back to my register and visit the drop down list, I will find my motorcycle option uh, right there in the list. And as soon as I choose that, it does automatically then populate the category and type fields. Now, a quick mention about first setting up the spreadsheets and making use of them. So when you download the, the sample spreadsheet, there will be some sample transactions here in the spreadsheet. So you'll want to clear out those sample trans transactions, but you want to be super careful to not clear or delete anything in the G column, the balance column, and definitely do not clear anything out of the category and type columns, the I and J columns, because actually these are formulas. So if I click my cell right there as an example, it's a complicated X lookup formula that is uh, here in both of these fields. The balance column is also got a, also has a formula that's using a, an offset technique. So again, if you um, are adopting the spreadsheet, then what I would suggest is that you uh, use your mouse and click and hold down to highlight um, all of these cells. Again, I am not doing that to the balance column, but if I now hit the delete key, uh, that would clear out those sample transactions. And then next I'd wanna clear out these, but leave those alone, but just to clear out the subcategory and now I could safely start to begin entering in transactions. And of course, I'd probably want to start with a, an opening balance based on a balance in my banking account uh, that would re be reflected on my particular start date. Okay, now I'm going to undo my clearing out of transactions so that I have my samples uh, back here in place. And before we move on to talk in greater detail about the dashboards and the credit card debt tracking, um, I want to talk about one of the other features that I enjoy in this spreadsheet, which is being able to put future transactions into the spreadsheet to help me get a sense for what my balance will be in the future. So it's sort of like a easy way for budgeting uh, for the month. So let's say that here in the month of May, I know that I have several transactions coming up later in the month. I'm going to skip several blank rows and put in what would be maybe some of those um, upcoming 
amounts. And I'll go ahead and speed up the video to get these in here quickly. Okay, so I've entered several future transactions in my spreadsheet, which I you know, certainly could put in what the future dates of those are. I don't have to, but by putting in those future transactions, I can see that my balance for the month will be reflected here uh, at the bottom. And yeah, again, it can just help with budgeting purposes to uh, remind myself of those upcoming future transactions. Now, it might be that as I continue to enter actual transactions into the spreadsheet, that I start to bump into my future uh, items here. So uh, in order to give myself some extra room, um, I can safely highlight that description and withdrawal amount and use just a regular old um, cut option in Excel and uh, yeah, maybe move these further down in my spreadsheet. Um, now, of course, I, I probably also want to take these subcategory labels as well. So I'll do a cut and then paste those down there as, as well. So that gives me some more room to continue to put in other transactions going forward. All right, well, let's talk about the dashboards to go with each register worksheet. So here under dashboard one, we have some different charts to categorize deposits versus withdrawals, um, expenses by month. So we have bar charts to reflect the expenses for the first five months of the year. And this is just based on what's ever, whatever's in the register uh, account. So as soon as I begin entering transactions for June or July, for example, uh, this chart can automatically update to reflect those. And we have that broader categorization of discretionary living expenses, medical uh, reflected here, and then a further categorization based on the subcategory uh, reflected here in a pie chart. Now, because all of this is based off of pivot tables in Excel, you have to tell Excel to refresh the pivot table data. So one way to do that would be to actually visit the pivot table worksheet. And when you do, there is a menu choice called pivot table analyze and a refresh button that's available here. Um, now the sample checkbook spreadsheet has a macro embedded in it if you choose to use the version with a macro. And so this blue button is tied to that macro. So when you click it, it will look at all the entries in register one and then automatically update the pivot tables. And that will also then update automatically the charts to go with. So that uh, there's also a blue button here for refresh data that also runs that same macro, which all it does is just visits the pivot table menu and, and clicks the refresh button for you. So again, just to demonstrate that, if I go to register two, for example, and let's say that we have a new entry in here that I'll put in for uh, groceries. So we'll uh, put that in there. Notice that as I started to type in GRO, it automatically popped that up as an auto, auto suggest because there's already an existing entry in there. So that can be kind of handy when you're doing a lot of data entry. But I've added an entry now to register number two. And if I visit dashboard number two and click on the button to refresh data, that does then update the charts that are reflected here. All right, so that's how the different register worksheets work together with their corresponding dashboards. Let's visit the card debt worksheet next. So the idea behind the card debt worksheet is to track your current credit card debt with the goal of paying off that debt. And so we have multiple rows and corresponding bar charts for up to eight different credit cards or loans. So as an example, let's say that in addition to a Wells Fargo and Discover credit card, I also have an American Express card. And so I'd want to take note of what the current balance is. Let's say this $925. 
and the date here is just for my own tracking as to you know when's the last time that I reviewed what my current balance for that credit card is so I'll just put in a, a date for that the initial debt is where you can put in uh, let's say like the highest balance you've had on that particular card let's say that at one point I had my uh, debt on that card up to fifteen hundred dollars and so once you've put in that initial debt number and balance then you will have a bar chart to show that currently I've I still have a 60 percent owed versus what the initial debt or largest balance of my card is and of course my goal is to pay off all my debt uh, so having my debt paid off go all the way to 100 uh, percent would be the goal Okay, so on this particular worksheet, you can enter in as many credit cards or loans as you might have. And again, just take note of what your current balance is, what maybe that initial loan amount is, or what the highest card balance uh, might be that you've had. The notes column is perhaps just to remind yourself of maybe the current interest rate uh, for, the co for the card. Uh, not something you have to populate, but it's there if you'd like to. And before we close out this quick demo, I do want to mention one other thing about the four different register worksheets that are in here. The Excel filter feature is activated on all of the column headings. So the handy thing with the Excel filter feature is that in the example of the subcategory column, maybe I'm curious to see just my grocery transactions. So by clicking on the little drop down here at subcategory, currently I'm seeing all transactions, but if I choose select all, that unchecks everything. And if I like to just see the grocery items, I'll click that, OK. And now my worksheet is only showing me four out of the 38 records, and I'm seeing just the grocery items. So again, that can be handy when you're just wanting to review your transactions and if I come come back to the subcategory drop down there I can clear that filter and I'm back to seeing um, all of my transactions and the very last thing that I'll mention is this last check number cell uh, so it might be that as you are entering your transactions and you are scrolling down the page that you might not recall what was the last check number. Uh, so this cell um, will automatically look in that particular column to show what the last check number is just to make it easy so that when you go to enter in a, a transaction that you know was a check, two or three for example, um, then this gives, gives you a quick visual reminder of the last check number that you had used. So that is a quick run through of the sample checkbook spreadsheet and I hope you find it useful.